Well, hi again, everybody. You're traveling with me, Jack, and of course, as always, with my beautiful, heavenly wife, Pam. Hope you're having a good day. I'm having a pretty good day here in Phoenix, Arizona, where you've no doubt heard about our heat record we broke of consecutive days above 110 degrees. But you know what? It's not the heat, it's the humidity. And we don't have humidity. And I'm going to tell you, we are all still functioning just fine. It is the desert. We're accustomed to this. And uh, I'm out and about today, just as I always am as well. Hey, I got a couple little things I wanted to talk about. First of all, uh, answer a, 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 a viewer's question, maybe a listener, um, who asked me, they said, why don't you change the name of your channel? Why is it still called Traveling with Jack and Pam, if Pam's no longer here? Well, I'm going to tell you, uh, that's just not going to happen. Pam was the inspiration behind us ever starting this channel. We actually started off just making a little travel channel, concentrating on the central coast of California, where we both had real estate licenses, and we thought it would be kind of nice to uh, share our adventures with people who might want to move there. And of course, the channel has now evolved. It's kind of like a mini, mini cable network. We have videos about grief and loss. We have travel videos, we have cooking videos, restaurant reviews. And a lot of people don't seem to understand there's actually three different playlists you can choose from that have the different categories. So the name's never going to go away. She will always be part of the legacy of our little channel here. And uh, so I just wanted to kind of put that one to rest right there. Now, the, the second topic, you, you saw the headline. I think I put something in there about retirement. No, yours truly still not going to retire. I might. I, I think about it more than ever. And I'll never fully retire. Uh, Pam and I used to kid about that uh, the word retirement's not in the Bible anywhere. We kind of use the Bible as our guiding principle and our faith and such. So I'll always remain active. It may be more my own private venture, things like that. And we'll just see where life takes me. And um, I'm going to mention my, my buddy, Sarasota Tim, who I did a, a, a video on that kind of a really caught fire. And some people commented saying, oh, you're riding on the coattails of his success, trying to get more viewers and listeners. And uh, guilty as charged. Uh, that's actually a common theme in the YouTube world. We're all part of this community. And I've had people share some of my more popular videos to try and drive traffic to them from my channel. And uh, we all just understand that's part of the game and it's not a big deal, it's okay. And uh, Sarasota Tim certainly doesn't need me to defend him on anything, but I did see something the other day in some comments that I wanted to bring up to our viewers and listeners here on our channel. And that was this question of, well, when should I retire? Now, he, along with others, will tell you you should get it as early as you can. Take your Social Security and retire at 62. That provided, of course, that uh, you're pretty much debt-free. You need to be debt-free. And thankfully, I am, but some people aren't. And make sure it is enough money that you could live on. Some people's Social Security payments are bigger than others. Some people's 401k balances are bigger than others. Some people have pensions and things like that. Some people have large inheritances. Some people who are widowed like me may have large insurance policies. Well, the one they lost, yours not included in that. Tiny policy on Pam. In fact, I was going to mention, you know, I paid off all of her medical bills and pretty well wiped out all of our savings with her life insurance and what we did have in savings. And then I had an attorney the other day tell me, he says, you know, technically you probably didn't have to pay off all those medical bills after she was gone. And I thought, well, gee, I wish I'd known that then. And then again, I thought, no, those were our bills. Obligated to pay them off, and I did. But the point I wanted to bring up was, on Tim's channel, and on every channel, you got haters out there. You got people that make these negative, snarky comments. I get them, he gets them. Anybody that puts herself out in the public, you're going to get them. It's just part of the drill. And sometimes the comments can be hurtful. And they make us feel bad. We have feelings too. The difference is we can't see you who are making the negative comments. All we see is maybe some little meme or some little name you've given yourself. And we don't know who it is. And it's easy to kind of be mean when you're in the in the shadows out there, you know. And uh, but we kind of just gotta let it roll off our backs. But 
I was reading some of the comments on his about where he was encouraging people to take your Social Security at 62. And most people are pretty nice, and he's encouraged a lot of people. But there was a couple on there, negative Nellies as we call them, who were just going after him, saying, oh, well, that's all fine, well and good. What are you going to do when you have cancer or you have a, a heart disease or some terrible thing happens to you and, and you don't have a million dollars in the bank and you're on Social Security? You're, you're going to be up a creek without a paddle. And I thought, you know, the point is life doesn't always go as we plan. I've got a video on it and a podcast. I wish if you've never watched or listened to it that you should. Uh, I would encourage you to listen to it. it. It's called When Life Doesn't Turn Out As Planned. I think that's the general title because life doesn't always turn out as planned. And you know, if you're constantly just planning for the what ifs, you're never living in the present. You're never living in the now. And I'm thinking, well, if, if I spend my entire life worried about when I'm going to have my heart attack or when I'm going to get my cancer diagnosis and when I may get hit by a car so I just need to keep on going like I'm going and I need to save up for those pending disasters it's like wow that's kind of a negative outlook on life now there'll be some haters that'll come on no it's called being responsible well again Pam and I were pretty responsible people Oh, we did some crazy things in life. Just ask our kids. They'll tell you all about it. But like when it comes to savings and retirement, we had accumulated a decent amount. And then unfortunately, uh, most of it went away during her illness. Also, a portion of it went away when we tried to start a real estate practice. Didn't go as planned. Again, neither one of those things went according to plan. Neither one of those things went according to what the experts tell you you should do. I apologize, the camera's moving on us there. The, the, the point being, you got to live in the present. And yes, yeah, still think about the future. You want to try and do things that are right, but they need to be the things that are right for you. And everybody's circumstances are different. I'm stretching out now to hold the camera because, because it is so hot. Um, the stand that I have it on is uh, getting a little wonky from the heat. But the point being, choose your comments carefully. You know, I, I recently did that other segment about uh, don't give advice unless you're asked. And when and how you retire is a very personal decision. For me, it may come next week, next year, 10 years from now. But again, it's my decision. And there are some people out there who are incredibly good savers. You've done a great job, and it looks like you're set for life. And then maybe that what if does happen. And I'm going to tell you, there are some bizarre things that can happen in life. One story I want to share with you is one that I heard recently when I was doing a program in the eastern part of the country. I'm not going to tell the city because I don't want to give away, uh, potentially give away a person's identity. But it was a, uh, a shelter, what they call a, a uh, rescue mission in a fairly large city. And they said that they're seeing more and more people um, who have jobs and who are trying to make the best of things who are ending up in their facilities. Uh, this is real. This is happening. But one story that really caught my attention was this one particular facility had a woman show up who said, I need a place to stay tonight. I have nowhere to go. And they said she was well-dressed. She drove a nice car. Seemed to have it together. But here was the deal. She was a college professor at a local university. That afternoon, when she got off work, and she went home, she rolled up in her driveway, and there was crime scene tape across the front doors of her home. There were government officials on her lawn. These government officials were from the IRS. 
Apparently, her husband had gotten into some shady business practices. The IRS seized all their assets, froze all their bank accounts, including taking their home, took him away to jail, and she had nothing. She had no access to any of her money, to her home, to even the clothes. All she had was what was on her back and what little amount of cash she said that she had in her purse. And she ended up in the rescue mission. Now eventually, she hopes to get back on her feet. She does have a job. But the government, of course, has frozen their bank account. So we'll see how that works. I only tell you that story because I'm sure she had the future planned out with her husband and thought all was well and good. And there were not going to be any big issues. I'm sure that she had planned for a good retirement. But now that all blew up in her face. And who knows what will happen. So again, it's a case of the best intentions were made. Everything was laid out, but life didn't go as planned. So that's kind of the point. We can prepare for the future as much as we want, but oftentimes it's not in our hands. It's in God's hands. It truly is. We don't know how much time we have left on this earth. And that's where sometimes I think about, well, maybe I will do retirement sooner than later, and then I'll still do a part-time job, something like that. Because we just don't know. I don't know if I made any sense here. I just kind of wanted to talk about it. I just thought it was interesting, the people that come out and make those kind of statements. And I'm glad their life is perfect and that their retirement savings is perfect and that they're going to have no disasters that come up and everything's going to be fine. I sure hope that's the case. And for a lot of people, it is. There's a lot of people living a fantastic retirement. There's a lot of people living a crappy retirement. And then you got people like Sarasota Tim who may not have the most money in the world. He may be living on a small Social Security payment. He may be working a part-time job to supplement his income. But for the moment, living in the moment and in the present, he's happy. Now, again, in the background, you're going, yeah, but what happens when he can't work that part-time job? What's he going to do then? I don't know. And it's not really my problem. That'll be for Sarasota Tim to figure out, and I'm sure he will. He seems like a pretty ambitious guy, pretty decent head on his shoulders. Yours truly? I don't know about the head on my shoulders. I'm still working on it. I'm still a work in progress. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Be sure and share it if you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Donate if you like. And check out the podcast, Love Letters to Pam. Apologies for the camera slipping up and down. <laughs> the heat again is causing my little... Uh, stand here to to kind of wilt in the in the heat until we see you next time have a great day better yet we're going to make it better tomorrow right bye now